there are so many things we may not be able to wrap our heads around very true but it is not enough to make us give up instead it should make us look ahead forge ahead and keep our head up hello amazing people good to have you on the program once again welcome on board your number one events program coming to you on the network service of the nta i am Marianne ayana and this is social log your sure way to socialize now sit back relax and keep your feet up let's begin Kicking off the program today is a trip into a beautiful world of our culture. All the way from Igbaroke, a celebration of their New Yam Festival. This is Igbo Idashu in the Baroque Kingdom. The king has come to harvest his yam from his farm. That's what I should know, Johnny. If you know, Kuni Huwao. Ijeshua Loa is one of the most celebrated festivals in Igbaroke. It signifies the time to start eating the new yam. Those days of our forefather, we don't have something like cassava, uh, rice plantation, all these things. All we have is yam, ram plantation. Joshua uh, Lawa itself is a time that we have to showcase the harvest in our, in our community. And for every community, it's always, uh, uh, it's always a celebration gala. The people of Ibaroke are filled with joy, love and happiness as they came in their multitude with a lot of excitement to show solidarity to the Olowa of Ibaroke Kingdom, sharing him when he returns with bountiful harvest from Igbo Itashu. Jeshua Lowa really is like uh, it's an event that uh, everyone looks forward to uh, uh, in every year. And uh, with KBC himself having his own farm, uh, and uh, we're able to showcase the blessings that God has, uh, you know, delivered on who planted. As you can see, all the, uh, the yam, quite uh, big yams that were harvested actually from the king's uh, farm. The uniqueness of the New Yam Festival in Igbaroke is the five kilometers royal procession led by His Royal Highness or by Dr. Francis Adefara Komiagbede III from the farm through Iloro to Ojaobada, then Ayetoro to the palace of Olowa of Igbaroke Kingdom. A beautiful sight for all spectaculars. Ijeshua Loa is so significant, or Ijeshua Shomo, so very significant and is well attended in Ibaroke. Because there are a lot of deities that we need to remember and celebrate them. The virgins will need to carry Oshomo's uh, yam because they are innocent. You see, youths and all the children, they are copying us. So next time, when, they, when is their time, 
they will still do the same. So everybody is happy now, even Yaloja, all the women in Ibaraoki and the village around Ibaraoki, they are very happy now that New Yam is in Ibaraoki. So everybody is free to go to market to buy and to sell. <laughs> We prepared the yam. We prepared the padded yam for all the children, the omowas and the kabis to eat padded yam for the first time. That's our duty as soluri. At the end, the new yam is cooked and pounded in the evening at the palace. For me, going to the farm, it has this. It has a lot of uh, uh, traditional significance. Significance. One, it shows that well, uh, Olowa himself has to go to the farm to pick yam. That is to tell everybody that Olowa himself is a farmer. So everybody in the community. You should go to farm. The indigenes of Igbaraoke Kingdom have continued to use the new yam festival not only for cultural celebration but as a tool for growth and development of Igbaraoke Kingdom. Intriguing, interesting, powerful, and unique. That is the Nigerian culture for you. It is, however, not surprising to see people from different parts of the world come to celebrate and engage our culture, arts, and craft. This is reflective in our next story. Let's see it. The National Council for Art and Culture recently organized its annual International Art and Craft Expo, INAC, which was held at the Sheraton Hotel and Towers, Abuja, with the theme, Networking Nigerian Crafts to the World. Today is a day to tell us that we need to put our differences behind. Today we are not discussing Muslim Muslim or Christian Christian or South-South or Southeast. We are discussing what unites us as a people and what can make us to be stronger and better. We must reawaken ourselves to understanding that making Nigeria great is the duty of every one of us to contribute. The 2022 Expo, which was the 15th edition, was geared towards sensitizing investors on the need to invest in the sector, as well as provide a platform to showcase the untapped and underappreciated rich cultural heritage of Nigeria, with participants drawn from the diplomatic missions and domestic vendors from the 36 states, including the FCT. The very uh, Asian art from India it uh, belongs to uh, Gujarat. It's called, it's known as uh, Lippan art, known as mud relief, and uh, you know it, it is also known as mud and mirror art. It's time taking. It's a clay and uh, mirrors, and uh, you can see uh, in some places uh, we've used uh, kundans. Like uh, you know, I just wanted to give it a different feel. You know, not like a regular just mud and mirror art, but also I wanted to create something uh, more colorful. So kundans are mostly used in uh, you know the Indian uh, clothes. So I've used it in my uh, creation. We're here in the 15th International Arts and Craft Expo Abuja 2022, and we'll be showing you today some of our traditional items. Our uh, this is Sudanese sandalwood. Yeah, this is Sudanese sandalwood. It's used in wedding ceremonies. 
And this is hinna, Sudanese hinna. It's also used in uh, special occasions and ceremonies and like weddings, things like that. Uh, this is part of our history, like our historical items. Uh, we just want to show our traditions and culture and historical items, and that's really the biggest uh, thing. Yeah. Lebanese and Nigerian cultures are so intertwined. We have third generation or fourth generation Lebanese living here. There's intermarriages and whatnot. So, honestly, when I came to Nigeria, I didn't feel like I'd moved out of Lebanon. Um, to me, it was very easy to settle in. And, and, and I truly thank every single person for their hospitality uh, that we, uh, we get here. And one thing I'll be taking away with me from Nigeria is good food and beautiful music. Thank you very much. One, two, go! La, 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 la. level for us in Nigeria is uh, the art definitely because um, you know you have exhausted what you have uh, in oil and everything there all your energies are channeled that way but what is actually spinning this country unconsciously or unknowingly is the art because anywhere you go to it is the practitioners of the art that are keeping the economy moving if it is like uh, in what you wear as fabric and everything it comes to us actually so we have been so very responsible for most of this. Is. Ours is to ensure that the government does the needful. What you push in into areas like uh, trying to beef up the I mean, like economy through the oil sector, like all of the energies you're putting there, if you put one quarter of that energy into the art, you will be so shocked at the amazing response that you get internationally. The event was aimed at promoting import and export business of our Nigerian art and crafts to the world and a spirit of cultural diplomacy, while also creating awareness and market for the vendors to market their crafts not only to their local community, but also the international community, and a bid to expose their wares to the global market and rekindle our cultural norms and values. Encouraging our very own and creating a platform for them to thrive and grow is certainly one of the many ways to revive and revamp this culture and this sector. And it's also beautiful to see it flow before our very eyes. To our third story on our political journey, especially in Africa, the IBB Legacy Lecture is one of those platforms that seeks to seek the truth and give us positivity at its very best. The Ibrahim and Mariam Babangida Presidential Library Foundation hosted the annual Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida Legacy Dialogue with the broad theme, Issues in Africa's Democratic Journey. The annual dialogue serves as a platform for leadership development for the African continent. Notable personalities in attendance were statesmen, public figures, and scholars of international repute, including the former Vice President of Nigeria, Mohamed Namadi Sambo, FCT Minister Mohamed Musabello, and other distinguished guests. Canvassing major issues, the dialogue aims to encourage students of history and political science to analyze the impact of good policies on the growth of the continent. As you approach the critical stage toward the 2023 general election in Nigeria, it is important to use this opportunity to call on all political parties and indeed candidates and other key stakeholders to adopt issues, issue-based campaigns. We must all shun the use of hate or foul language 
and mud sliding to avoid overheating the polity. Populating the panel to discuss issues in Africa's democratic journey were eminent stakeholders cutting across diverse sectors of Nigeria. Members of the civil society, transformation agents, the academia, politicians, and members of the fourth estate of the realm. The challenge of power transition in Africa, inclusion, voter apathy, and other related issues in electoral process found expression. And if there is no political will, the policies will stay moribund because no one is enforcing them. And that is the reason why I say when we think inclusion, we think about the political landscape that surrounds it. We all have a social contract, whoever you are, whether you're a follower or you're a leader. To solve these issues, we must be very honest and accountable to our social contract. We must do the part that we have signed up to do. We must deliver or else we'll keep on going around in circles. I supervised elections in other countries, in Croatia, in Cambodia. I saw people who were poor. They were not selling their votes. We make this excuse in Nigeria. And it's too easy and too simple. Nigerians are not selling their votes because they're poor. They're selling their votes because they're not educated as to why they should not. And they're selling their votes because our values have completely collapsed. What is important is for the voters, the average voters, to get educated, not just by the electoral, by INEC, but also by the parties. It's also the party's responsibility to educate its members, like you rightly heard, um, about their rights um, and why they they should be very careful in who they select and what that value, what that person brings in vote. So it's very important. The second legacy dialogue and the lecture was set against the immediate backdrop of Nigeria's 2023 transition election to interrogate not just the issues surrounding the triumphs and travails of Nigeria's democracy, but create an opportunity to build the wider legacy of progress achieved so far. Basically, you see, we are thinking uh, American system of democracy and it, is, it has been proven that it's not working for us so what we should do is that we should have our own model of uh, democracy in place everything said here is all predicated on the kind of structure that we have if we do not have the right structure no amount of economic model whether it's from China or from Indonesia or from Europe or America that will function in this place. We are making some progress. It's better to say that, yes, we've achieved some strides in terms of the structure than to say, okay, we're just at the barest uh, minimum point. I believe with more time, the democratic process, the democratic structure will mature and hopefully we'll have a more stable democracy by God's grace. The robust discussion culminated in an interactive session with the audience and offered a timely reminder that the functioning of democracy requires transparency as a key principle along with integrity and independence of the electoral umpire and the judiciary. With good governance comes huge responsibility. This is a factor that we need to understand to create the change we so desire. We're closing the program today with a graduation ceremony, and I am very sure this will take you down memory lane. In order to build and maintain sound minds, to fully discover and develop our potentials and make a world of difference, we need education. It is expected that we move through levels to attain greatness in our academic pursuit, so that makes graduation very important in a child's life. It is in this regard that schools around the Abuja metropolis had their 2022 graduation and award ceremonies, bringing out graduating students, moving through classes, and some completing their secondary education. Some educationists describe students' upward movement from one class to another as symbolizing readiness to go higher in life. Again, want to wish all our graduates as they move to the next level that God Almighty will keep you 
and that we will all excel as it were. Who wants to get to the top in your career? How many of you? Do you want to reach to the peak? Do you want to get to the peak? My graduates, yes, I see those hands. In order for you to get to the peak, in order for you to get to the very top, then you must have a solid foundation. The quality of education we offer to our students in this school will continue to meet world standard. We have already gone digital as a school and we promise to introduce more technological innovation. I congratulate the entire graduating students and most importantly our SS3 graduates for successfully completing their six years program in the school with a tax of discipline, self-determination, hard work, tolerance, and above all, the fear of God as a mark of their graduation from this prestigious citadel of learning. Everyone desires to soar to greater heights, no doubt. Little wonder these little ones were overjoyed having crossed the hurdle. <laughs> As a parent, how do you feel when your child graduates to another level of learning? And um, it's a prayer answered. He's actually the first of four children. And this is a very big milestone. We really want to celebrate and thank God for helping him through this phase. You know, the, the joy is, it, it knows no bound. But for those still planning to, you know, you, it will be as if it's not going to come true, but with patience. Their parents to bring up their children in the way of the Lord and let them have things the way they want in Jesus' name. Our great parents who have committed their children to this place, you did not make any mistake. You are in the right place. I can probably say that they have impacted in me, the teachers. I'm very grateful to them and to my proprietor. He's truly a father and a teacher to me. And to the student left, I advise that they study hard and obey their teachers. I'm happy I'm going to senior secondary school, that is SS1. I wrote an essay competition and I became the winner out of three best entries. I'm feeling awesome and good that they should be behave themselves, study hard and don't look for anything else but God. Lots of challenges through the years, lots of fears, lots of worries, lots of challenges, lots of insecurity, so many things. It looked like the year was not going to come to an end. But after everything, it's, it's so much joy to see hard work being rewarded and it's really exciting. Hard work, a lot of reading and don't let it get in your head. Just work hard and try and get to your goals, that's it. I feel quite awesome. I've been waiting for this day for six years. This day will definitely come and they should work hard to be celebrated efficiently when it's their time. I don't think there's a secret to it. There's just a, it's what I call a, an unused fact. The only secret to success is putting in the work. Without the work, there is no success. To all graduates, we say congratulations. <laughs>was beautiful, absolutely phenomenal. Time flies when you're having so much fun. And that's all we can take on the program today. Join us again, same time next week. Remember, one step at a time. Stay safe, everyone. Bye.